Hello everybody. Today the lecture number 2 of module 10 will be delivered. We have started uh, this approximate method for vibration analysis and we have seen that with the help of energy principles that minimization of the some cushion that is called Rayleigh's cushion we have obtained the natural frequency very accurately for the fundamental mode. Now let us see how we can apply this method uh, to find out to extract the other frequencies. Now in that case the Rayleigh's method have been extended by Rays to include the more number of terms in the assumed deflected function. Because in the Rayleigh's method we have seen that uh, assuming a single function for the deflection uh, shape uh, that satisfies the boundary conditions of the uh, beam or structure. Then we have used this to find out the maximum potential energy of the uh, this continuous system or discrete system whatever you call and then we have also found out the maximum kinetic energy. So equating these two maximum potential energy to the maximum kinetic energy we could have found a cushion which is nothing but omega square that is the square of the natural frequency and we have found directly the cushion which is nothing but the square of the natural frequency. Now Ridge has extended the Rayleigh's principle by including more number of terms in the deflected series by which it is possible to increase the accuracy of the results as well as to extract the other frequencies, higher frequencies of the system. Okay. Now outlines of this today's lecture is first we will discuss the Rayleigh's method that we have earlier uh, used to solve some problems. We will now use this method to show you how a non-uniform beam or bar can be solved using this method for the natural frequency. Especially the fundamental natural frequency will be obtained using the Rayleigh's method. Then I shall explain what is the Rayleigh's method, how the Rayleigh's method has been extended and it is now called this Rayleigh's method. It is very popular method for finding out the eigenfrequencies of the structural system. Then I will give some numerical example of Rayleigh's method. First let us take an example of a non-uniform bar. Say this bar is a waist shaped bar and uh, you can see here the cross sectional area reduces to zero here. It is a theoretical uh, model and uh, we can uh, see that mass distribution is also here linear. Given the linear mass distribution there is m x, m is a function of x, m is the mass per unit length. M, uh, as a function of x is given as 2m into 1 minus x by l. So that is the mass distribution. Now from this uh, distribution of mass we can see that when x is equal to 0 if we take this as the origin of this uh, waist shaped uh, beam or bar then this is uh, at this point you can see that mass is 2m whereas when x is equal to L because it is reduces to a point we get a zero mass. So this function represents truly the mass distribution that is taken for this problem. Similarly the stiffness, axial rigidity here we are considering the bar in axial vibration that is in longitudinal vibration. So therefore this uh, axial rigidity as a function of x is expressed as 2 ae into 1 minus x by l. Again we can see that at x is equal to 0 we are getting the maximum uh, axial stiffness because the cross sectional area is more. Therefore we are getting 2 ae here 
whereas at x is equal to l at this point we are getting zero stiffness because it is a point now first task is to assume a displacement function so that it can satisfy the boundary condition now boundary conditions are of two types one is your displacement boundary conditions that is your slope and deflection and slope the second type of boundary condition is force boundary condition that is on the stresses that is uh, produced by bending moment or shear or axial force now a function has to be chosen in such a way that both the boundary conditions are satisfied if it satisfies both the boundary condition then the accuracy of the result will be more otherwise the accuracy will remain in question mark that is if the boundary condition is not satisfied fully then we cannot expect the accurate result now here you can see the first uh, a function is selected and it is only one term function that is c is a constant here and sin pi x by 2l l is the length of the bar l is the length of the bar here so and you can see this end is free so therefore any force or any stress that is here only the axial stress is possible del u by del x at x is equal to l should be zero so if i see uh, select a function like that whereas you know that uh, this u x t is nothing but capital u x this is the shape function into a time function for harmonic vibration the time function is sin omega t a harmonic function and some constant may be associated here okay so now this ux is assumed as c into sin pi x by 2l which defines the deflected shape of the uh, bar when it vibrates in the fundamental mode of vibration now you can see when x is equal to 0 when you put x is equal to 0 then uh, this u x t that is 0 t should be 0 and you are getting 0 here because the function is uh, sin pi x by 2 l. Now if you come at this point that is the uh, this uh, this point which is a free end and this point is located at x is equal to l okay. Now at this point you can see the stress is a e del u by del x this is nothing but a e d capital u dx and time function will remain as it is should be equal to 0 so at x is equal to l this is should be equal to 0 okay now you can see del u by del x again it becomes a cosine function c pi 2l cos pi x by 2l now you can see at x is equal to 0 cos pi by 2 again the slope is 0 because the deflection is 0 but this condition is more important here for calculating the stress at the free end so when x is equal to l we are getting cos pi by 2 and cos pi by 2 is 0 so therefore this uh, def, uh, stress that is a e del u del by d u by d x into f t is 0 or otherwise a e del u by del x at x is equal to l equal to 0. So this function completely satisfies the uh, geometrical as well as force boundary condition. So having selected the function satisfactorily now we proceed to find out the expression for potential energy and this uh, kinetic energy. Now potential energy is the strain energy stored in the bar due to axial deformation. So 
uh, we have the first derivative of this function as u prime x capital u prime x is equal to c pi by 2l cos pi x by 2l so that is the first derivative of the function because in calculation of strain energy uh, during this axial deformation we require to use the first derivative of the function so strain energy expression stored in the bar due to axial uh, force is v max here we are dealing with the maximum potential energy so it will give the expression for maximum potential energy 1 by 2 integration 0 to l a e as a function of x du by dx whole square dx so upon substitution of u prime x that is du by dx here and after squaring we now get this expression which is to be integrated so this expression is half then integration 0 to l 2 c square pi square by 4 l square a e 1 minus x by l cos square pi x by 2 l dx now using a trigonometrical identity because we know that this trigonometrical identity that we know will be very useful for integration purpose so trigonometrical identity we know that uh, this 2 cos square theta is equal to nothing but 1 plus cos 2 theta so using this identity now we can write this cos square pi x by l equal to half 1 plus cos pi x by l so that is being used here you can see and then integration is carried out so this is what is trigonometrical identity that we use here for uh, the integration purpose now here this uh, integration has to be done because there are two terms here 1 minus x by l because of mass distribution uh, stiffness distribution that was assumed as linear so uh, ae as a constant term will come out the integral sign and uh, the other constant say pi square c square and 4l square will remain outside the integral sign and then integration of cos square pi x by 2l dx with limit 0 to l that is a very standard integral and it is due to orthogonal property of the cosine function that we already know it and then this integral is nothing but l by 2 so that we have used here this integral is coming here as l by 2 then this integral you can see it is x into 1 plus cos pi x by l dx so we have to integrate separately this x and then x cos pi x by l integration of x with respect to dx then it becomes l square by 2 so l square by 2 term is here then other integral terms that is the x cos pi x by l has to be integrated so this integration that x cos pi x by l dx to be done with the rule of integration by part so use the rule for integration by parts so in this case we will assume one as a first function say x if we assume first function and this is the second function so we will uh, this integration can be carried out like that that uh, first function into integration of the second function so it becomes l by pi sin pi x by l 0 to l then minus derivative of the first function so 1 integration of the uh, the second function that is pi x by l so l by pi will come l by pi and then here sin pi x by l dx 0 to l 
this integration you can see then again if i integrate sin pi x by l this cos pi x by l will come but with negative sign so negative negative positive uh, sign will be there and another constant l by pi will be multiplied here so ultimately the result that we get from the integration by parts of this function x cos pi x by l we now finally obtain the expression for potential energy v max h a e pi square c square divided by 4 l square into l by 4 plus l by pi square now uh, taking some term common say if i take uh, l by pi square common and then we can uh, write this and uh, here and pi square we take outside the bracket then we get here 1 plus pi square by 4 and outside this bracket this term a e c square by 4 l will be present so we get the maximum potential energy as a e c square by 4 l into 1 plus pi square by 4 now see here the l is the length of the bar a is the constant quantity that is the area of the cross section at the fixed end and e is the modulus of elasticity that is also constant and c is a constant that is associated with the assumed shape function okay now after obtaining v max we now obtain the maximum kinetic energy so maximum kinetic energy again it is given as 2m omega square c square by 2 into integration of this uh, m uh, this function actually it is half m u x square u uh, as a function of x square so in this case it becomes say actually this expression is coming if you see this expression is coming from original expression for kinetic energy that is written half and since mass is a variable quantity here we have to use this in the inside the integral sign and this u square x dx and omega square term will be there for harmonic vibration so now using this u square u x as c sin pi x by 2 l and uh, other quantity mass distribution is given as 2 m 1 minus x by l this is the mass distribution we now get uh, this kinetic energy as 2 m omega square c square by 2 into this integration 0 to l 1 minus x by l sin square pi x by 2 l dx so this is integrated again this uh, m omega square c square and 0 to l sin square pi x by 2 l dx minus 1 by 2 l integration 0 to l x into this sin square pi x by 2 l again we use the trigonometrical identity that is 2 sin square theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta so using this identity where theta is equal to here pi x by 2l so we now get this x into 1 minus pi x by l dx again this has to be integrated by parts integrate by parts by parts taking x as a this uh, this x as a first function and cos pi x by l as a second function now after doing the integration the maximum kinetic energy t max is equal to m omega square c square l divided by 4 into 1 minus 4 by pi square now according to Rayleigh's principle we know that t max is equal to v max therefore we get from the equating these two expression v max and t max v max earlier we have obtained now equating this we get omega square equal to 1 plus pi square by 4 divided by 1 minus 4 by pi square e by m l square 
and after simplifying omega is now 2.4146 root over a by ml square now this is the fundamental natural frequency of the wedge shaped bar that is a bar having the non uniform mass and stiffness distribution exact value so far reported in many literature is 2.404a root over a by ml square and you can see this error is minimum so by taking a suitable shape function we can now uh, use the release method even uh, for the beam or bar a continuous system where the mass distribution and stiffness distribution are non uniform that is variable with space coordinate now let us discuss the more general principle using the strain energy and kinetic energy and it is known as Rayleigh release method and very much useful for this continuous system now actually release method is to evaluate the quotient release quotient which is nothing but the square of the natural frequency Ridge has modified the release method by taking more terms in the shape function and he has minimized this release quotient with respect to the unknown coefficient that is used to construct the shape function with this minimization principle a set of linear equations can be obtained and from that the eigenvalues and eigenvectors can be found out so now we have seen that release method is nothing but release method in extended form in which single shape function is replaced by a series of shape function multiplied by constant coefficients the coefficients are adjusted by minimizing the frequency this is frequency square you can see with respect to each of the coefficient which result in an algebraic equations linear equations we are getting in omega square the solution of this equation will give you the natural frequencies and mode shapes of the system now release quotient as we have seen it is nothing but omega square equal to v max by t star max where t star is the reference kinetic energy now let us assume that wx for any system which has continuous mass and uh, stiffness distribution wx is equal to c1 phi 1x plus c2 phi 2x plus cn phi nx so n number of terms here are taken to constitute the shape function here c1 c2 etc are the uh, constants and phi 1x phi 2x etc up to phi n are admissible functions that satisfy the boundary conditions of the system now if it satisfies both geometrical and force boundary condition then uh, the result is expected closer to the exact values otherwise some error may kept up so phi 1x phi 2x etc uh, should be selected such that it satisfy the boundary condition in some problem it is not possible to satisfy all the boundary conditions simultaneously however this can be used to obtain the uh, results which is practically uh, implemented that is it is possible to use this result for practical purpose that within some uh, minimum error that we can find even if the shape function does not satisfy completely all the boundary conditions now maximum potential energy now can be written because we are taking so many constants c1 c2 etc so after squaring this derivative of this when we square the derivative in some problem we require first derivative to compute the strain energy in some cases we require second derivative to compute the strain energy for example the uh, bar in axial vibration we require first derivative to calculate the strain energy whereas 
when a beam is considered to be in transverse vibration, we require second derivative to calculate the uh, strain energy because in that case we have to use the curvature. So, uh, this maximum potential energy after squaring this uh, function, shape function is obtained as half double sum Kij, Kij are the constants that will depend on the properties especially the stiffness properties of the system and ci cj are the constants associated with the shape function so after integration of this shape function to calculate this strain energy we obtain an expression like that which is a double sum because uh, the the constants are not single so so many constants are there so we use the double sum to calculate the maximum potential energy however the element that you are seeing kij it is known as stiffness coefficient can be calculated by this formulation so it will be integral of in case of longitudinal vibration of bar it is the integral of uh, 0 to l is the limit and a e x a e is a function of x that is the stiffness distribution into phi i prime x phi j prime x dx what is phi i prime x that is the derivative of the this ith function ith shape function say when the phi i x is known and if i calculate this first derivative we write it as phi i prime so similarly another uh, function say jth function when we calculate this first derivative of the jth function we get phi j prime so here we can use these two for calculate the stiffness element kij however this uh, kij will be different if we take the case of transverse vibration of beam in that case where strain energy is calculated from the curvature so therefore it is given as ei that is the flexural rigidity of the beam okay this is very important property of the beam in vibration flexural rigidity of the beam and since we require the curvature we have to take the second derivative so in that case phi i double prime represents the second derivative that is d phi i square d phi x square okay similarly here phi j double prime will represent the second derivative of the j shape function therefore using this we can calculate the elements of the stiffness element stiffness element because it is a summation v max again becomes a summation as a result of n number of coefficients used to express the uh, the shape function so we get uh, every term of this uh, v max after summation that is associated with a stiffness element or stiffness coefficient that is kij then the maximum kinetic energy again when we calculate this kinetic energy as a half m x this velocity square that is u x square and for maximum it will be omega square this because maximum velocity is amplitude of the velocity in uh, harmonic motion is omega into this uh, amplitude of this displacement so omega a and when we square it it will be omega square and uh, this other constant square will be there so t max the kinetic energy now half omega square double sum m i j c i c j now here m i j is calculated like that uh, integration 0 to l m phi i x phi j x dx now note that the k i j is different in case of different problems say for example of uh, longitudinal vibration we use the first derivative whereas for the bending vibration we require 
second derivative. Now, but kinetic energy is, is same for all types of problem in a continuous system where this m actually m you can write as a function of x because it is also variable in space. So, m phi i x phi j x dx. Now, with this expression v max and t max, we now use the Rayleigh's principle to extract the eigenfrequency. So, next the Rayleigh's quotient is found as omega square v max by t star max. Now, here you can see that we have to minimize this Rayleigh's quotient. So, minimizing this Rayleigh's quotient, we are writing this expression uh, del omega square by del c i because the expression for v max and t max contains the various coefficient c i j i varies from 1 to n and j also varies from 1 to n. So, therefore, we use the partial derivative sign. Now, this function has to be differentiated. So, after differentiating we can write t star max into del v max by del c i minus v max then del t star max by del c i divided by the denominator what is there it will be squared quantity so t star max whole square. So, uh, this is uh, 0 when the numerator is 0. So, writing this numerator equal to 0. So, del v max by del c i minus omega square del t star max by del c i i equal to 0. From that we can now obtain the natural frequency because this del v by del max you see the v max is this. Now, if I take the first derivative of this function with respect to c i we can write this single summation i k i j and c j because we are differentiating with respect to i. So, differentiation of this quantity the with respect to c i will be 1. So, therefore, we are writing this uh, single sum j k i j into c j where i varies from 1 to n. Similarly, del t star max by del c i will be equal to this m i j into c j. So, this expression now what is obtained in the earlier case this expression now because we have found this and we have also found this. So, now we can write this expression as summation j j varies from 1 to n into k i j minus omega square a m i j into c j equal to 0. Now, this sum can be expanded by varying j from 1 to n and for each i the n number of equations can be written for i varying from 1 to n n number of equations can be written. So, suppose i is equal to 1. So, then we get k 1 1 minus omega square m 1 1 plus c 1 plus k 1 2 minus omega square m 1 2 c 2 plus dot dot like that up to c 1 n minus omega square m 1 n c n equal to 0. So, that is the first equation when i is equal to 1. Then second equation when i is equal to 2 k 2 1 minus omega square m 2 1 into c 1 plus k 2 2 minus omega square m 2 2 into c 2 plus and uh, the nth term will be k 2 n minus omega square m 2 n c n equal to 0. Like that when we come to the nth equation k n 1 minus omega square m 2 1 into c 1 plus k n 2 minus omega square m n 2 into c 2 plus dot dot k n n minus omega square m n n c n equal to 0. So, this is uh, the set of linear equations 
uh, n number of linear equations we have obtained linear in uh, c the coefficient c and you can see this expression can be written in a compact form say this matrix k minus omega square matrix m and then a vector of the constant this c equal to 0 where the vector c transpose is equal to c1 c2 etc up to cn and you can see the matrix k we have already identified the elements here so n by n matrix for this and mass matrix is also n by n we can write now to extract the eigen frequencies first we express this equation in the matrix form in the matrix form this equation that i have shown in my last slide is that two matrices are identified k matrix and m matrix and uh, after joining them we can write k11 minus omega square m11 like that these are the elements of k matrix k and m so both are actually joined because this equation that i have written so following this equation now we can write this equation so and the the vector c1 c2 up to cn is multiplied with this matrix so n by n matrix is multiplied by n by 1 vectors so the vector contains the unknown coefficients once we get this uh, this omega for each of the omega we get a set of unknown coefficients which will define the mode shape now if i want to solve this equation to get this omega you can see one possible solution is that c1 c2 etc are zero but that will not give us the eigen frequency that we desire so therefore for non trivial solution we form a determinant with the elements of the matrix and equate to zero so for non trivial solution this determinant this you can see there are n number of rows and n number of columns and these elements of this matrix k minus omega square m matrix so here you can see k11 minus omega square m11 k12 minus omega square m12 like that up to 1n omega square m1n and similarly you can see the nth row the k n1 minus omega square m n1 then k n2 minus omega square m n2 and k n n minus omega square m n n this equal to 0 so that determinant is to be expanded and equated to 0 to get the characteristic equation uh, this will be in a polynomial form of nth uh, degree of this polynomial in omega square of nth degree so which has to be solved to find out the n number of omega square from which we can find the natural frequencies uh, omega in circular unit uh, that is radian per second and we see how we can apply this to a problem now take an example of cantilever beam of uniform cross section having the mass m per unit length and fractal rigidity ei constant along the span of the along the length of the beam now we require to find the natural frequencies and let us target for two frequencies by taking two number of terms earlier we have demonstrated one problem of cantilever beam taking only this one term and we have directly used the release method to get the estimate of the fundamental frequency now here you will see i have taken this uh, two terms of the series and first term is c1 x by l whole square plus c2 x by l cube so we have taken a quadratic term and a cubic term so this term you can see will easily satisfy the boundary condition especially the geometric boundary condition if i see the geometric boundary condition at x is equal to 0 the deflection is 0 as well as slope is 0 whereas this 
force boundary condition that is where we require the second derivative and the third derivative second derivative for calculating bending moment and third derivative for calculating shear force will not be fully satisfied say bending moment here which required uh, the second derivative expression is 2 by l square now here uh, when we put x is equal to 0 we should get the bending moment as 0 if the uh, force boundary condition is satisfied but here as a result of this uh, function that we have taken we are getting non-zero second derivative because it is 2 by l square l is also constant and therefore we do not get a zero bending moment here so the force boundary condition is not satisfied however let us use this uh, function use this shape function to calculate the natural frequencies and let us examine the accuracy of the eigen frequencies so to calculate the elements of the mass matrix say m11 we now require to obtain 0 to l this integration m m is constant here and phi 1 square dx so this integration is easily carried out m we can take outside the integral sign and then phi 1 is your this phi 1 is x by l square so phi 1 square means x by l to the power 4 therefore after integration we get here the m11 as ml by 5 now let us calculate this m12 m12 will be m phi 1 into phi 2 dx and m12 will be equal to m21 m is constant here so we can take outside the integral sign and here you can see phi 1 is x by l square and phi 2 is x by l cube so after multiplying phi 1 and phi 2 we get x by l to the power 5 and after integration of this we now get ml by 6 which is the value of the element m12 and m21 now we calculate m22 m phi 2 square dx which has to be integrated in the limit 0 to l and therefore we get m and phi 2 is x by l cube so we have to integrate this function x by l to the power 6 into dx and after integration we get ml by 7 now let us find the stiffness element now in this stiffness element we require the second derivative to be used so k11 is ei phi 1 double prime square dx ei 0 to l and phi 1 double prime phi 1 is the function phi 1 was x by l square so phi 1 double prime will be 2 by l square so if i integrate this k uh, ei uh, function 2 by l square whole square dx 0 to l we get k11 as 4 ei by l cube then we require to calculate other elements so k12 equal to k21 and it is 0 to l ei phi 1 double prime phi 2 double prime dx that function has to be integrated over the beam length so ei is a constant term it is taken out outside the integral and then 0 to l 2 by l square into 6x by l cube dx 6x by l cube is nothing but phi 2 double prime that is second derivative of phi 2 now after integration of this function and putting the limit we now get this k12 equal to k21 is 6ei by l cube then k22 remains so k22 is the integration of 0 to l ei phi 2 double prime whole square dx equal to ei 0 to l 6x by l cube whole square dx and after integration of this function you can easily verify it it becomes 12 ei by l cube so we have got all the elements of the stiffness matrix however it is 
2 by 2 matrix because only two terms of the series are used. So we have obtained this k11, k12, k21 and k22. This matrix we have found out and omega square we have found m11, m12, m21, m22. I am using this bracket because this has to be combined. Now this has to be multiplied with this C1 and C2 and should be equated to 0. So naturally we can find an eigenvalue problem that is by equating the determinant to be 0. Which determinant? Say K11 omega square M11 2 by 2 determinant that is the first element then k12 minus omega square m12 k21 of course k12 equal to k21 equal to minus omega square m21 and then k22 minus omega square m22 this determinant is equated to 0. So after expanding this we shall able to find uh, this natural frequency omega square, the square of the natural frequency and then we can further get this value. So let us now obtain the frequency determinant. So frequency determinant because k11 is obtained as 4 ei by l cube omega square into m11 there is ml by 5 minus then k12 6 ei by l cube l to the power 3 minus ml by 6 omega square then uh, this element will be same because of symmetry so 6 ei by l cube minus ml by 6 omega square then the last element k22 is 12 ei by l cube minus ml by 7 omega square and it is equated to 0. Now we can identify the stiffness this parameter. So dividing both side, all the elements or multiplying all the elements by L cube by uh, this EI, L cube by EI. If I multiply all the elements of the matrix, then we get 4 minus ML to the power 4 omega square divided by 5 EI and this other element will be 6 minus ml to the power 4 omega square by 6 ei then in the second row it will be 6 minus ml to the power 4 omega square by 6 ei and the last element that is the uh, element in the second row and second column is 12 minus ml to the power 4 omega square divided by 7 ei so this determinant is equated to 0 now for convenience let us take this parameter ml to the power 4 omega square by ei equal to lambda. So we can write now this 4 minus lambda by 5, 6 minus lambda by 6 and 6 minus lambda by 6, 12 minus lambda by 6 as the elements of the determinant and equate to 0. Okay. Now expanding this determinant it is possible to obtain a quadratic equation. So the equation that we obtain is lambda square minus 1224 lambda plus 15121 equal to 0. So this quadratic equation is obtained after expansion and simplifying. So the solution of this quadratic equation is obtained as lambda equal to 1224 plus minus this root over 1224 square minus 4 into 1 into 15,121 divided by 2. So the values of lambdas are lambda 1 is 12.481 and lambda 2 is uh, 1211.5. So this is the lowest value of lambda which will give the fundamental frequency and therefore we get lambda omega 1 equal to square root of this 
3.532 root over ei by ml to the power 4 and square root of this is now omega 2 that is the second uh, frequency parameter which gives omega 2 equal to 34.8 root over ei by ml to the power 4. Now we can see that this fu fundamental frequency is very close to the exact result because the exact result for the uniform cantilever beam is known and first frequency is 3.515 root over ei by ml to the power 4. So here the error is minimum where the second natural frequency is 22 into root over ei by ml to the power 4 and the large difference arises in the higher frequencies omega 2. So which suggests that the two terms are not sufficient for calculating the higher frequencies uh, and we have to increase the number of terms that means the calculation effort increases. So this integration will be uh, lengthy and your this matrix size will also be increased. So that means determinant has to be obtained after expansion. So that type of problem where more number of terms are required then we have to use the computer program. Once the stiffness matrix and mass matrix are generated then we can form the determinant or we can find the stiffness matrix and mass matrix and then solve the eigenvalue problem. For each of the omega then we can find the uh, mode shape function that we have taken this uh, c1 phi1 plus c2 phi2. So for each of the omega that is for omega 1 c1 c2 will be different and for omega 2 other set of c1 c2 will be obtained. But one thing is to be noted that c1 and c2 is actually found from the solution of the homogeneous equation and it will not give the unique value. So therefore a relative magnitude of c1 and c2 can be obtained. That means c1 can be uh, assumed as 1 and in terms of c1 the c2 can be expressed like that. So now we give a example of non-uniform clamp free bar that we have taken in the earlier example for release method. Earlier we have used only release method and from where we have got the fundamental frequency in axial vibration. Now let us use this uh, problem for this uh, uh, using the two terms of the series that we are now doing for Rayleigh's method. So ux is assumed as c1 phi 1x plus c2 phi 2x. Phi 1x is assumed as sin pi x by 2l and phi 2x is assumed as sin 3 pi x by 2l. Now here we have used a sine function and you can see here that the function that are chosen uh, here to represent the mode shapes or the eigen function ux clearly they satisfy the boundary condition that is the geometrical boundary condition at the fixed edge and stress boundary condition also at the uh, free edge. So therefore, we can use this uh, for this problem. But for accuracy as we have seen in the earlier example, more number of terms are required for the higher frequency. Now let us use this because for higher frequency the manual calculation will be difficult because more number of terms are to be used. But let us explain the concept with the help of only two terms in the deflection function. Now here mass distribution is assumed as mass distribution is assumed as, as a function of this x. So it is m into 1 minus x by l and the stiffness distribution also assumed as a e 1 minus x by l. Now with this we now obtain the stiffness element say k11 is nothing but a e phi 1 prime whole square dx because it is axial vibration problem so we use the first derivative 
So first derivative of this function that is sin pi x by L. Now it is cos pi x by 2L and then the other constant will be coming outside the uh, integral sign. So we are writing now this as a e pi square by 4L square integration over the length of the beam of the function 1 minus x by L cos square pi x by 2L into dx. So cos square uh, this pi x by 2L can be written here like that 1 by 2 1 plus cos pi x by L and using this here we now get this integral of this uh, k11 that is k11 now becomes a e pi square by 4 l square into l by 2 l by 2 is coming as a result of integration of cos square pi x by 2 l dx over the length 0 to l so that integration is here when we multiply this with 1 then we have to integrate this in isolation so it is coming as l by 2 minus this remains and uh, here say as a result of using this function now we can write this as 1 by 2l integration 0 to l x into 1 plus cos pi x by l into dx okay hence integrating we get now k11 the first element of the stiffness matrix as 0.8669 a by l now k12 equal to k21 is a e 0 to l into 1 minus x by l phi 1 prime phi 2 prime dx and that is uh, after using this uh, phi 1 prime and phi 2 prime we now get it uh, like that uh, k12 or k21 which are equal is uh, nothing but 3 pi square a by 4 l square and the integration of the function 1 minus x by l cos pi x by 2l cos 3 pi x by 2l into dx. Now again we have to use another uh, identity trigonometrical identity that uh, suppose a and b are the two parameters then we can write this cos a plus b plus cos a minus b if I write this sum then we get what 2 cos a cos b similarly when we write cos a plus b minus cos a minus b we what we get is minus 2 sin a sin b so using this now we write this cos pi x by 2l cos 3 pi x by 2l as half cos 2 pi x by l plus cos pi x by l and also we, we can use this uh, integral cos n pi x by l dx 0 to l is 0 and then we get using these two important formula in this expression we get k12 equal to k21 is nothing but 0.75 a by l next we require uh, to determine k22 k22 is a e 0 to l that is the integration over the length of the beam into is equal to 1 minus x by l phi prime 2 that is second function phi 2 is differentiated first with respect to x and then it is squared of and then used in the integral so after integration or after simplification we get 9 pi square a e by 4 l square into 0 to l 1 minus x by l cos square 3 pi x by 2 l dx again writing cos square 3 pi x by 2 l as half 1 plus cos 3 pi x by l we get now k22 equal to 9 pi square a e by 8 l square integration over the length of the beam 0 to l into 1 minus x by l into 1 plus cos 3 pi x by l dx 
that is after integration we now finally get k22 as 5.8017 a by l next task is to determine the mass coefficients so the value of the elements of the mass matrix is now determined so m11 is the integration of mx phi 1 square dx so we use the mx and phi 1 square and then we integrate using this sin square pi x by 2l again breaking this term as half 1 minus cos pi x by l then we integrate this function and after integration finally we get the result as 0 0.48 1.4887 ml so this is the result and this is first we take this uh, decomposition that sin square pi x by 2 l is decomposed as half 1 minus cos pi x by l and then we require to integrate this is uh, has to be multiplied with this and we require in one step the integration by parts so after using all these things finally we get m11 as 0.1487 ml then m12 is 0 to l mx phi 1 phi 2 dx m 0 to l 1 minus x by l sin pi x by 2 l sin 3 pi x by 2 l dx again using the trigonometrical identity that is sin a sin b is nothing but half that is cos uh, a plus b minus cos uh, this a minus b so that we have used earlier so here again we are getting sin 3 pi x by 2 l into sin pi x by 2 l equal to half cos 2 pi x by l minus cos pi x by l the integral can be carried out uh, and noting that again the integration of cos n pi x by l dx over the length of the beam l is 0 when n is integer finally we get this coefficient m12 as 0.1013 ml now m22 has to be calculated so m22 is nothing but m phi 2 square and uh, this is nothing but that quantity sin square 3 pi x by 2 l dx has to be calculated and uh, you can see here again we have used this decomposition of sin square 3 pi x by 2 l by this half 1 minus cos 3 pi x by l and half is coming outside the integral sign so after integration of this we finally get this m22 as 0.2387 ml so therefore frequency determinant becomes first element is 0 0.8669 minus 0 0.1487 lambda then 0 0.75 minus 0 0.1013 lambda then 0 0.75 minus 0 0.1013 lambda then 5.8017 minus 0 0.2387 lambda and this determinant is equated to 0 where lambda is nothing but ml square by ae into omega square after expanding the determinant we get uh, lambda square minus 36.2767 lambda plus 176.56 this is the characteristic equation so this characteristic equation is solved this is characteristic equation which will give 2 lambda which corresponds to 2 natural frequencies on solving this we get lambda 1 lambda 2 as 5.7919 and 30.4849 which is related to the frequency omega now the frequency omega 1 is 2.4066 root over a by ml square and omega 3 is 5.5213 root over a by ml, ml square you can see the first frequency is close to the natural value that we have obtained earlier also using the single function in Rayleigh's method now let us uh, look at the shape function whether we can 
completely define the shape, shape, func shape function for uh, uh, after finding the c1 and c2 but for each of the omega 1 the c1 and c2 can be only found in relative sense that means if i write say k11 minus say omega 1 omega 1 square m11 k12 minus omega 1 square m12 and similarly k12 minus omega 1 square m12 and k22 minus omega 1 square m22 and this matrix multiplied by c1 c2 and equate to 0 because now omega 1 is known omega 1 is you heard this 2.4066 and say a by ml square so after substituting this omega 1 here we get a value of we get the values of c1 c2 corresponding to this frequency but c1 and c2 in absolute sense cannot be obtained so for first uh, frequencies we get the ratio c2 by c1 as 0 0.0368 for the second frequencies that is omega 2 omega 2 is equal to 5.5213 we get the ratio c1 c2 equal to minus 0 0.6382 now here if i use this c1 as 1 then we can write ux is 1 into sin pi x by 2l plus 0 0.0368 sin 3 pi x by 2l and here if i use this uh, c1 as again 1 as c2 as 1 then we get c1 as minus 0 0.6382 and the other function can be written sin pi x by 2l plus 1 into sin 3 pi x by 2l thus two mode shapes are obtained which are approximate because of nature of the frequencies because nature of the frequency only first frequency is uh, correct uh, or close to the exact values whereas the second frequency is not correct because only the two terms in the expressions are taken now using this method now you have seen that the eigen frequencies and mode shape that are, can be obtained and this is purely an approximate method but with certain assumptions and uh, this particularly the selection of the shape function plays an important role you can improve the accuracy of this method so let us summarize today's lecture in this lecture first we solved a problem of non-uniform bar in axial vibration for fundamental frequency using Rayleigh's method Thereafter, we discussed Rayleigh Ries method, which is nothing but extension of Rayleigh's principle by incorporating more terms in the assumed deflected series. We illustrated with an example of cantilever beam for bending vibration and non uniform bar in axial vibration, where we used two terms in the series expression and obtained two frequencies. But you have noted that first frequency is close to the exact value while the second frequency is not. And it provides crude estimate because only two terms are used. If we increase the number of terms, the accuracy can be increased. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.